Hi children, welcome back. This is your ICT sir. Today we are going to learn about algorithm and what are flow charts and pseudo codes. So welcome back. Um, sit and listen to the, uh, the presentation. If you feel that you did not learn anything, you can pause rewind and listen again and understand this is for grade 6 7 and 8 so if you go to the government book grade 6 government book you have algorithm and flowchart and for ICT grade 7 you do have algorithm problem development Okay, flowcharts and algorithm. Grade 8, 2 has. Finally, grade 8 can have a chance to do some kind of a program using algorithm. Learning, writing algorithms and then learning them. What are its inputs, outputs and process. According to that, you can simply build a small program using scratch to develop a small program so let's jump in right into algorithm in your book it says that algorithm is a method that includes all steps of solving a problem in order is known as algorithm so trying to solve a problem trying to solve a problem step by step is known as algorithm over here I have shown the algorithm in two ways one is the pseudocode and the other is the flowchart so flowchart and pseudocode let's Let's see what our flowchart is all about. Flowchart. A flowchart is a type of a diagram that represents a process of an algorithm. This is the algorithm is represented in a symbol manner with diagrams. I have taught you all these things. What are they? Just trying to make a, a fruit salad and what are these green colors represents and what are these orange colors or pink color represents pseudocode in the other hand it's simple English when it's it says here when when an algorithm is represented in simple English terms it is called pseudocode simple English using uh, simple English you can use a process to begin and to end and you must remember step 1 to step 12 there are some process and then in my next flow, uh, flow uh, in, in my next presentation slide flow charts symbols and its actions I hope you can remember what are these symbols represents so this symbol represents an input and output an action of input and output this refers as a process box and it shows its action too this dimension a, a, a diamond shape is a decision making asking for a question and getting a reply with its yes or no these are the connectors where the flow can be connected and finally these are the control flows that shows the directions of a flow chart The rules of flowcharts. 
you must remember, children, you must remember, there are some rules when you are trying to design a flowchart. Flowchart is generally torn from top to bottom. Remember that. All symbols must be connected with arrows. All flowchart starts with the process symbol. You must remember it starts with the process symbol. Decisions have symbol have two exit points. Yes or no. The diamond the diamond shaped one. Okay. And then the next slide says about the rules of pseudocode. When you are writing English language, you must remember to use day-to-day -day language. It can be English, it can be any other language, but very simple. When writing an algorithm in a standard way, every algorithm must have a start and an end. That is also very important when it comes to like you can say start and end in a pseudocode. Therefore it is compulsory to include initial steps in writing an algorithm in addition to a normal steps. You have to write them in order also. Okay. Next slide is all about the control structures. Now when we are talking about flowcharts, flowchart has three control structures in grade 6 to grade 8 and even grade 9, 10, 11 you get these control structures taught to all students sequence starting from the beginning to the end it goes as a sequence order selections you have a diamond or a decision taken whether it is yes or no repetition with a decision it repeats until a condition is true and then ends with a false if it's about sequence you have seen looking at this picture a man trying to walk towards towards this steps starts from the beginning to the end so sequence are starting from from a, a top to bottom is known as sequence there's an example over here also how do you cover a book selection selection is looking at the, the condition if you really want to switch on a fan if there is power available you the fan will work if not the fan won't work so if it has power yes the fan will function if not it won't function and then it ends selecting selecting one one out of a decision Next is the repetition. Repeating. Now if if you are being given a till to fill up, so you will keep on filling up until it reaches its top of the till where you will not will not able to put no more. So this is you keep on filling the till until it's full so repetition like the width repetitions can be represented in two ways it is actually known as do while and do until so here looking at this um, example when you uh, when you want to write a uh, write something with a pen, how do you go about it? You can take a pen. You can you can see whether is ink available. 
If it's yes, you can write, keep on writing, and then once you finish, you end the session. Here, you take a pen, you write until, until there is no more ink. You will keep on writing, and then when there is, if there is no more ink, then you stop. Right children, looking at all this uh, uh, simple uh, way of writing your day-to-day -day problems, life is also day-to-day -day, uh, uh, a task of doing your work from starting to the end. So today I have an example for you to fill up. Make sure that you use the keywords now this example number one look at this and I want you to write on uh, in your book and send me the answers I can send this through whatsapp too and I want you to write simple English a very simple English like like this using step one to the end of the steps, writing step one, begin, and so forth. So you can write this as looking at this flow chart. Example two is also I hope you have boiled rice. If you have learned how to cook rice, here you are starts from here and then serves until serves try to do that also an example 3 you switching on a bulb look at the conditions and then do so there are two conditions you can just write is the lamp is the lamp plugged in is the bulb burnt out so if it's yes or no you can write them down try to do it and then I'll see you in the next slide thank you